hi and welcome to today's chess lesson where we are going to learn how to move and attack using our bishop what you see on the board is indeed the white bishop let's have a look at the starting position you will notice that the bishop like all the other pieces starts behind the pawns we have two bishops one starting on a dark square and one starting on a light square now, when you learn how the bishop moves, you'll also learn that the bishop starting on the light square can never move to a dark square. And the bishop start, starting on a dark square can never move to a light square. But you'll see in a moment why that is the case. Let's look at how the bishops move. Now, the bishop moves and attacks exactly the same. And the bishop moves diagonally. So this bishop can move all along this diagonal or all along the diagonal like this so he can move forward and he can move backwards he can also move along this diagonal now any piece standing on one of the squares that the bishop is attacking can be captured let's look at a few examples now in this diagram you notice that the black rook is attacking the white king when the king is attacked we say check the black king must try and get out of the attack. There's three things he can do. He can move to a safe square, or he can maybe put something in between the attack. Now you'll notice that the white bishop can move in between the attack to block the rook. So if we move our bishop to the square in front of the king, the b3 square, now the rook cannot get to the king. He will first be attacking the bishop, and since a rook can't jump over pieces, the king is safe. But if we go back, we can see there is another thing that we can do to stop the attack on the king. The bishop can also capture the rook. If the rook is not on the chessboard, it can't attack the king, so that is a legal move. So, the bishop simply moves to the square where the rook is standing and captures him. The king is safe. We notice on this diagram also that the black king is attacking the white pawn. If he can capture that pawn, this game might be a draw. The problem is, he can't capture that pawn. The pawn is being defended by the bishop. So do you see how a bishop has a very long range attack and defense ability? That makes the bishop quite powerful, but not quite as powerful as the rook. Do you recall how I said earlier that a bishop that starts on a white square only stays on the white squares and the bishop that starts on a dark square only stays on the dark squares? Here is a very good example. Notice how this bishop starts on a light square. That bishop is therefore called the light square bishop. Even though it's black's bishop, it's called black's light square bishop. And he can only stay on the light squares. Notice how all the diagonals have the same color. So if he moves along that diagonal, he stays on a white square. The same goes for the other bishop. Along this diagonal, all of the squares are dark squares. So any square he moves to is simply a dark square. Let's look at a few moves. Do you notice how these bishops only stayed on the colors that they started with? Black's light square bishop is still on a light square, while Black's dark square bishop is still on a dark square. Let's see if we can use a bishop to checkmate our enemy's king. The easiest king to checkmate is a king that stands in a corner. The reason for that is that this king has very few squares to run to. For example, he, this king can only move to this, h2, g2, and g1 square. So if he's being attacked by a bishop, let's place a black bishop on the board so that it attacks him. There are only two squares he can safely run to. Now if we only have our black king left, it is absolutely impossible for that black king to cover those two squares. If we place the black king here for example, yes the white king will be in check and he won't be able to move to this square anymore because h2 is being defended by the black king. The black king is defending all of these squares. But the white king can still move to g1. It's not checkmate. 
we will need a second bishop to cover that square. Do you notice how we have the light squared bishop on the chessboard? Our other bishop would be the dark squared bishop, so he would definitely be able to cover that square. Notice how this time we need two bishops to checkmate a king, while a single rook would have been able to do the job. In this position, white is in checkmate. He's being attacked by the rook that is covering both those squares. The king is covering these two squares, so the white king has no square to move to. Checkmate. If we just consider that, we will notice that that makes a rook a little bit better than a bishop. Let's look at a few more positions where the bishop plays a part in the checkmate. In this position, it is white's turn to move. Can you see where white can move to checkmate the black king? Well, let's have a look at the squares that the black king can move to. The white bishop is attacking these squares, which means that the black king may not move to those squares. He may, however, move to these squares. He can obviously not move to f7 because one of his own pieces is occupying that square. That means the only two squares available is f8 and d7. So with that in mind, can you see where the white rook can move to, to attack the black king as well as the squares he can escape to? The white rook can move to d8. Moving to d8 attacks the king and all of these squares. That means the king is not allowed to move to any of those squares. We remember that the bishop were covering these two squares and the king can't move to the square where his pawn is standing. That means this king can't move. One option that he might have had was to capture the white rook. However, if he does try and capture the rook, he will be in check and we know as a rule in chess, you are not allowed to move to a square that is being attacked by the enemy pieces. He will have to take back his move and try something else. In this case, there's nothing he can do. Everywhere where he moves to, he'll still be in check. This is definitely checkmate. Now let's go back to the starting position and see how we can get our bishops into play. Since our bishops cannot jump over the pieces, actually none of the pieces except for the knight can, we will have to open up a little window for them to come out. A very common way to start a chess game, actually the most popular way, is to start with the e2 pawn, moving it to e4. That is a very good move. The reason why is because it takes some space in the center. Later on you will learn that the center is a very important part of the chessboard because from the center we can attack and defend. Most of the action is also happening in the center and you want part of that action. When we move the pawn to the center, he occupies a little space there. Not only does he occupy some space in the center, he also opens up a gap for the bishop on f1 to come into the game. In his next move, that bishop will want to move to e2, c4, or maybe even to b5. Why not to d3? Well, the problem with d3 is it blocks our pawn on d2. d2 pawn can't move anymore, which means the bishop on c1 is going to have to find another way to come into the game. Of course, we can move our b2 pawn to b3, and that is another common way to get the bishops into the game. The bishop on c1 can now move to b2 or to a3. When it goes to b2, it is called a fianchetto. Don't worry about the difficult names, but it is called a fianchetto. Just be careful when you move it to a3, because sometimes, before we can get to a3, black has already opened up for his f8 bishop. If we move to a3 now, that bishop will simply be captured by black's f8 bishop, or his dark squared bishop. 
I think we've learned enough new things for today, but let's quickly go through what we've learned. First of all, we learned that bishops travel along the diagonals. We also learned that a bishop starting on a white square will always stay on a light square, and a bishop starting on a dark square will always stay on the dark squares. Then we learned the starting position of the bishops is one on a dark square and one on a light square next to the king and where the queen will stand on d1 and d8. To get our bishops into the game, a very good move is to open up the two center pawns for the two bishops to come into play. We also saw that a bishop and a king cannot make a checkmate on their own. There is always one square that the king can run to. For this to be a checkmate, we'll need the other bishop. That teaches us that the bishop on his own is worth a little bit less than a rook on his own. Because a rook and a king can make a checkmate while a bishop and a king can't. Now that you know how the bishops move and attack, use what you've learned to play a game of pawn soccer goalkeeper training. See what is the maximum number of pawns that you can stop from reaching the other side. Or if you're playing white, see what is the maximum number of pawns you can actually get to reach the other side. Good luck, I hope you enjoyed.